In this video I'll talk about what the Bergman kernel of the polydisc is and I'll also briefly uh, mention the Bergman kernel of the Euclidean uh, ball. Okay, so this video can be watched independently from previous ones, but ideally, if you want to learn more about Bergman kernels, you can watch my previous video on Bergman kernels on general domains of C to the N. The link can be found in the description. Okay, so let's first work through the polydisc. Okay, so what's the polydisc? The polydisc is simply N fold copy of uh, the unit disk very simple by the way if you don't know about n-dimensional uh, complex analysis you can just simply take n equals one and again there will be a lot of interesting content in this video still okay so in the previous video i explained that to find the bergman kernel all you need to do is find an orthonormal Hilbert basis, let's call phi j, uh, of the Hilbert space of square integral, integral, integrable holomorphic functions on the ball. Okay, so once you have such a thing in your hand, then the Bergman kernel will be just this uh, infinite sum, right, where, you know, you just put in the sum and phi j z bar, phi j xi. Okay, so the reason why we can compute the Bergman kernel in the polydisc is because uh, there is a relatively simple orthonormal Hilbert basis in this case available, right? So, sorry, there's a typo here. So I didn't mean P, I meant P. Okay, good. So let's consider sort of polypowers or multipowers. So uh, if Xi is a vector, Xi1 all the way to Xi n, then Xi to the alpha, where alpha is let's say a multipower, is nothing but Xi1 to the alpha 1 times Xi2 to the alpha 2, Xi n to the alpha n, and the same thing for Xi uh, conjugate, which is just conjugation uh, component wise, raising it to the beta multipower is nothing but this expression here. Okay, so now let's, uh, if, if you want to understand the integral of Xi alpha times Xi conjugate beta on the polydisc, it's a basic calculus exercise to see that this integral is zero in case alpha is not equal to beta. Now, again, since the polydisc is an n-fold copy of the unit disc, you can easily conclude this using Fubini's theorem, right? So if alpha is not equal to beta, means that alpha j is not equal to beta j for some j. Well, you just, when you're integrating in the jth variable, there you will see that the integral will be zero and by Fubini, the whole integral will simply be zero. Okay, so I leave that to you. And another thing that's uh, basically a one, a variable calculus exercise plus Fubini is what happens when alpha is actually equal to b. So in that case, you will be dealing with this integral, right? And again, integrate uh, component-wise using Fubini's theorem, and you will simply see that this integral on the polydisc is nothing but pi to the n times 1 over alpha 1 plus 1 times 1 over alpha 2 plus 1, all the way to 1 over alpha n plus 1. In each component you use, for example, you can use a lot of things, but maybe uh, polar coordinates helps you out. So what this tells you, right, is that this integral, which is nothing but the L2 length of uh, Xi alpha, right, so this is the L2 length of Xi to the alpha, uh, this is equal to this expression here. Let's call that conveniently f alpha. It only depends off alpha, right? So then what do you get? Well, from fact one and fact two, you get that this uh, class of functions, mono normalized monomials, right? So phi alpha form an orthonormal Hilbert basis of H2b. Okay, so from the fact I mentioned above, 
right? Then simply what is going to be uh, the Bergman kernel of the polydisc P? Well, it will just be this infinite sum. Okay, but we don't have to sort of stop there, right? So one over F alpha, alpha is given quite concretely. So I just take the reciprocal and I look inside what's in the sum, right? So this is a sum running over a multi-index alpha. So split the sum into multi-indices, right? So just split each, multi, each uh, component power separately. I did that here in square brackets. And what does each running index give you? Well, just take the sum over these running indices, right? So Z1 bar alpha 1 times Xi1 to the alpha 1 times 1 over times 1, pl 1 plus alpha 1. What's that? Well, let me just write this separately so you'll see it. What is... Uh, maybe I should put a K here so that you're less confused. So just one index running here, Z, so that maybe I can put... Uh, gamma to the k. Okay, you've seen this before. This is nothing but 1 over 1 minus gamma square. Right? So then what do I have here? I have here this whole sum is nothing but this thing here times the same expression for z2 times all the way to the same expression all the way to z to the n. Right? And of course, I also have this 1 over pi to the n. I keep that uh, in front. And then I have this nice formula for the Bergman kernel of the polydisc. Right? So this is the formula for the Bergman kernel of the polydisc. Really, really, really explicit. Okay. So you can do the same game in case of the ball. Right? So you take the Euclidean ball. Okay, so it turns out that the, the orthonormal Hilbert basis in this case is very, very similar. You can work with monomials as well. They will be always orthogonal to each other. Unfortunately, you will have to choose a different normalization. So, so this, uh, uh, this will not be the length of monomials anymore. You will get a more complicated expression, but again, involving uh, gamma functions and whatnot. But eventually you can also figure that out as well. It's slightly more complicated, but it's still calculus. And once you go through this, these steps as we've done above, you get what the uh, Bergman kernel is for the unit ball, not the unit polydisc. It's this nice expression over here. Now here, you just simply have the inner product of Z and N Xi. Very simple. All right, good. So hopefully this video together with the previous one gives you sort of a good idea of what uh, Bergman kernels are in, uh, in C to the N. Thank you very much for your attention.